All right, so I'm back. I got my memory card. Let's put this guy in. That felt pretty silly. Let me not trip and die over that box. And yeah, so I guess I'm gonna have to take a nice vertical shot of that to encompass the whole thing. That looks good though. Well, let's turn, let's crank the brightness up a little bit on that. Let's get a nice bright shot. Boom. It's gonna be the front shot. Make sure that cord goes in. Ooh. Uh, let's see. The pole is a little weak on that, but I would not consider that broken by any means in a vintage piece. Get Electrolux there. Pull the cord out so they can see the cord. It does come out. In. So I actually will say in the listing that the uh, the retractor for the cord does work, but I will say it does seem to stick a little bit. So it either needs a new spring or a cleaning or whatever. Um, so I'm just gonna want more of the body there. We're gonna get the caster wheel and the front Electrolux automatic. It says right there. We'll get the Electrolux brush head. We'll get the cord up here. What else? Let's see. I will get the bottom of the vacuum head because it had the manufacturer information, which in a collector item can be extremely important. So I will flip that over. And I'm just taking a picture of the full bottom of the vacuum head and trying to get the text on the bottom there. But the bottom of this was preserved very well. The fact that that writing's still there and wasn't eroded or anything shows that this is a you know fair condition piece all right i will flip it on the bottom after i take a picture of the top just trying to get a little better of a picture there hopefully yeah around I might have to de detach that piece which I will do at this point because it's becoming difficult to take photos properly so let's detach this if I can figure it out all right that locks it Oh, I hope I can detach this. There we go. Just a little bit stuck is all. <laughs> Alright, put this to the side. And... Let's see, can I, I got this side. I get this little tag right here. I guess that doesn't matter, but that's get one of this side, opposite of the cord, and then I will get one of the bottom, and then the accessories. That should be it. So we got down there. All right. One more of the side profile. And then I will lay out the accessories. That's it. Ooh, my thumb got some gross debris on it or gunk. 
That's part of the process. Now I'm going to state um, some of these parts in the description. I'll state some of these parts may be for a different model, but that about half of them are for this one. I'm just trying to lay them out in a way that looks somewhat acceptable. Now remember, when you're selling things on eBay, you are selling the picture more so even than you're selling the item. So you want good pictures, you want a good clean layout, you want, you want to show the entirety of the item because that's what people have to judge what you're selling. So here we go, let's show that I have two of these bags. Show that one is open a little bit. And that's gonna be my picture right there. Not, oops, let's see. It's not a good one. Busy. What you talking about? Let's scrap that one. And here's your accessories. Now, if I wasn't talking to you guys, I would have counted the number of photos I took. So let's just see how many I did take there. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Ooh. 15 pictures, so I'm gonna have to trim some of those out. That's gonna do it for that. Um, so that's it for the can, uh, the vacuum. Pack everything back in the box. Unfortunately, with an item like that, and I don't like big items like a vacuum like that, but, uh, the shipping is probably gonna be if I go USPS close to you know 40 bucks, 50 bucks. If I go, um, if I go UPS, it'll probably be close to 30 even just because of the size and weight. This thing weighs a good 20, I'd say 20 pounds with everything, probably 25 pounds. So it's heavy, but all right, let's pick a few more items out and uh, go from there. All right, so on to the next few items here. Um, I got a wide variety of stuff I'm going to list today. So next up is this, uh, this is a reloading press for shotgun shells, a rock chucker reloading press, RCBS rock chucker reloading press. And essentially what this is for is if you shoot a lot of shotgun shells or you want to reload very carefully for uh, like competition shooting or something like that, and you need a very uh, precise load every time, you would get something like this, so you have, you know, an accurate load every time. Let's see what we got. So here's two dies. I think there's a called dies. Okay, let's see what else we got in here. Cover piece. Um, we have lube. And these are allowed to be sold on eBay. Um, Some firearm stuff is not allowed. This is something that is allowed. Gotta get all this stuff out. I don't believe this one was ever used. I bought it at an estate sale for $15 and I should be able to get 60 to 100. Considering it's not used and I have everything I believe for it. I don't think a hundred is unreasonable. I believe this is their personal information, so I won't open that. Looks like personal info. So here's the press. And typically what I like to do is I will try to put the box somewhere in here. 
so people know that it's complete or close to complete. So I get the box in there. It's not the prettiest of pictures, but. That'll have to do. So I will take a picture of white. That's my separator shot. And that's just what I do in between photos so I have a space when I'm looking on the computer. Take a shot of that with what? I need to do better with this stuff on the side over here. Let's try that one again, actually. I'm very sloppy with my photos right now in terms of process, but once you get in the groove of stuff, you can move very quickly through items. I could probably photograph 10 things in, uh, you know, 30 minutes easily, probably closer to 20 if I'm cruising along. And it depends what the items are. Some stuff's more complicated to photograph and test. And those are typically the items worth more money. All right, that'll do for that. So now I'm gonna take the box away for now and photograph this stuff a little more closely. Let's just go through. That's the actual press. We have the lube oil, an extra nut and bolt, and I believe a cover. And I'm taking a picture of the manuals. The long metal press die, I guess that's called. Not sure. I think the die is attached to it. I'm just taking pictures of everything I can. I forgot to include the book I have right here for it. This is a powdered data manual, which is actually pretty important. And it's just like, um, you know, if you have accessories for something, it always helps sell whatever it is. Like if you, if you sold a phone with, a, you know, a power cable, an SD card, and a case, you know, that's kind of the equivalent of throwing something like that in with a, a press kit, I guess. I don't think this came with it, but I bought it with it. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna throw that back in the box, take a final picture, and... Move on to the next item. This thing is very heavy though, this weighs at least 20 pounds. It's solid steel, so that's what you should expect. Let's see, that's a good way to situate that in there. Put the manuals in first. And now I'll put this thing in. in there and when I ship this I will probably ship it in this box inside another box and I will stuff this with newspaper so nothing gets damaged or moves around too much just because you know this plastic piece will, will probably break if I just let it roll around in there so something like that that'll close I feel silly struggling with this on camera, but I'm sure I'm not the only person. <laughs> Let's take all this out, lay that sideways, just get it done. Sideways, put this guy under there. Here like that. The lube, but 
right there. This piece right there. And the powder manual left it on top. And this did not come with it, but I want to try to fit it in here anyway. So when that sells, I will repack it much better. But just to get on to the next item. I'll put this to the side. All right. Then I'm taking my blank shot. And on to the next item. Here we have a vintage Rolodex. You don't see these too often. A Zephyr Rolodex X. So if you guys don't know what this is for, uh, this one's a little janky, but um, essentially what this is for is you would store your context on it. So this is a Rolodex, uh, a Zephyr Rolodex X model 1753. So before cell phones, before the computers and all that, you would keep all your contacts in alphabetical order in something like this. So say your friend was named Chris, you turn to C. Ooh, or C and P antiques in this case. You know, uh, you'd store the contact there. So say you go down to with an I, and then you'd have someone whose name started with I or business started with I. So that's pretty much what that's about. And uh, this one, I don't have the key or anything to it, but it's luckily it's open. So um, these are going for about twenty to thirty bucks, depending on condition and stuff like that. I'll probably get around twenty for this guy. So. Start taking pictures of it. Oh my gosh. I'm straight clowning today with this stuff. All right, so. And some of these items are old. They leave dirt remains on here. That's why I like to use a sheet. That way I can just throw it in the washer with some bleach when it does get stained inevitably. And uh, yeah, so. Let's take a nice picture of a Zephyr Rolodex X. Closed. We're gonna get a close up right here. Picture of the front so to show it's a little off kilter. Let's get a full frontal pick, full side. Paperclip. See ya. All right, here we go. So we'll get A here. Just to show all the original papers in there. Now, I don't know what you guys think about having your hand in a photo like this. Some people might care, some people might not. My hands aren't the cleanest or best, but I've seen some janky hands in eBay photos before. So. Do that one, I can always not include it. Get the model right there. Let's see, go from up here. Top shot. And close one more time. That's it. Blank. I'll put this all away at the end right now. I'm just moving through stuff. Um, take a picture of these two pretty cool vintage thermoses. One of these is pretty janky. You can hear the rust, but we'll see. I'll sell them as a pair. So I got the blank shot already. of thermoses. Take the lid off each of them. We're just going through a series of photos. So 
This one has a cracked lid, unfortunately. Um, I paid $5 for both of these. That Rolodex I got for free. Actually, someone just gave it to me. Uh, I paid $5 for these, and the only reason I bought them was because uh, it was a kid at the estate sale, and no one was really buying anything because it was like the third week they had the sale and they just had junk left over. But uh, these actually do have a little bit of a market for them, so. These back over, get the thermo. So vintage thermoses, these have a pretty cool pattern. One is still usable, one is, I'd say, pretty shot. The left one's the good one, the right one's the pretty shot one. I'm going to take a picture from the top of both of them. Look at the bottom of both so they can see one is fairly rusted. It's leaking rust actually. But you're just trying to disclose any flaws in the items because you know you don't want anyone to be upset that you mislabeled or deceived them. My thought is, especially on eBay or Amazon for that matter, under promise and over deliver. That way people people's expectations aren't ruined or Anything like that. So let's see if I can get a good shot for you guys on here. It says thermos bottle number 525, filler number 52S, pint size, thermos, <laughs> a brand of vacuum bottle. Ther what does it say? The American Thermos Products Company. Norwich, Connecticut, USA. So, made in USA, a really cool vintage piece. The pattern on here is great. The original Thermos logo, um, slight denting on here, but really these are a cool piece. Um, and I, I think the galvanized steel or whatever's coating the inside of these, I think they're glass coated with um, some kind of coating, but like they just don't dull over time. And I, I believe you could put a drink in there and it would keep it cool just fine at least in this one cool or hot rather and um yeah just really cool pieces for five bucks to make the kid happy how could i say no you know looks like a little smiley put it back together i will get um in fact that one is cracked so the top says Thermos brand product poly red top. And let's see what the top says there. It says tighten cup firmly to ensure positive seal pressure. Seal stopper, pint and quart wide mouth. Yeah, this one. I'd probably be better off just selling one, but since they are the exact same model, I will sell them together. Well, look at all this rust coming out, see? That's that's terrible. So I will disclose that in the listing, obviously, because that's pretty bad. Let me take a picture of the crack. Um, okay, I do have a Sharpie or a pen. I like to indicate with that, so. So this is the problem one. So again, I'm not hiding anything on these listings. I just want to get quality pictures. The only time I use a pen or a Sharpie is to show flaws. And then I'll get a picture of the good one. And then both together. That's it for that. Just to ensure I have that good side on that one. Flank shots. All right, and I'll probably do one or two more items. Let's see what we got for fun in here. I have way too many of these Nike shoes. I'm gonna lot all those and just sell them. <laughs> I don't feel like listing them individually. 
I bought a, I bought like a 20 pairs from someone for I think it was 80 bucks. A few of them were worth about 40 or 50 and then the rest I just have sitting around. I've been sitting for probably half a year now since last summer. Um, I will list. Man, I wish it was closer to Halloween. These things are really cool. These are vintage Halloween figures, so these are Telco motion motionettes. This one is a vampire. I forget which one. Style number 87005. It's a really cool piece. Maybe I will list this guy, but um, when I was a kid growing up, we had one similar to this. My mom had a witch one. So that one, I don't know that I'm going to list these. I'll probably wait till closer to Halloween, fetch a much higher price. But I only paid pretty much $5 for each one of these. Here's a witch. This one is model number witch. <laughs> so this is, I don't even know if this is a telco. Now this is a witch time, but these things are cool. And uh, people pay pretty good money for them. Without the boxes, the smaller working ones go for about uh, 60, 40 to $80, I'd say, with the boxes. I'm thinking I'll get $100 a piece on those or close to it. Hmm. All right, next up I will list this. Kodak, Eastman Kodak Company, Rochester, New York timer. This is an old film development timer. Pretty cool piece. Um, I've found and sold these exact ones before. They're not super uncommon, but all they are is like a little mechanical wind-up clock that times you for 60 minutes with a, a second and minute timer. And that's pretty much it. So, Do not wind too tightly, but yeah. So let me stop it. And all you got to do is wind these up a little bit. Just don't wind too tight, as it says. And you can set it to, you know, let me put that right back to the start. This one's a little hard to get right on now, so I can get it close enough. Right back to the start there. I actually keep one of these, because if I want to... There's one of those productivity hacks where you do like a 30 minute sprint on product, you know, productive things. And I, I use this actually a lot of times to time it. So I'll start it at uh, zero, zero, like I just did. And I'll wait till it gets to 30 or I'll do an hour or something. But so let's start with the pictures. Now these go for 15 to $30, depending on condition and how many other listings are going on at the time. But really cool piece. I love mechanical stuff. A lot of other people do too. Let's get a close up of the face. I'm gonna picture the back here. is how fast you should be able to go through items if not faster and like that on this frontal picture and that's it blank shot one more item let's see what we got I have some pretty old vintage yearbooks. These are from the 40s. They do go for a decent amount. We got some old PS1 games in there. Austin Powers, what do I do? What am I going for here? And <laughs> crossing, what a junk game. I just bought all these for 50 cents each. Monkey Hero, Kingdom Hearts, good game. I have Kingdom Hearts and Kingdom Hearts 2 for PS2 in there. Um, got Dragon Quest 8 in there. That's one that sells. That's pretty rare. Let's see. What else do I want to list? I'll list the Sony camera. It's not vintage, but it's something anyway. Well, this is actually DV Direct, so this is how you convert 
um, I believe tapes to DVDs or digital to DVD, but this thing's actually worth a decent amount. I have the camera that went with it. I purchased all this for 10 bucks. So let's see. Sony video camera charger. I got everything here. Yeah, let's just run up. Some of that rust dust. The box. The charger. I don't know what this guy is right here. Let's see. I believe that's the charger. Sony Handycam video high eight recorder. So this is a I think this is a digital and tape recorder. High eight tape recorder. But um yeah, there's the Yep, so you put a tape in there. If there's power that would open up. But this this is this is the old school vlog style, you know? <laughs> This thing would probably go for, you know, 800 bucks brand new back in the day, a thousand bucks. And it was the only way you could record stuff. No one had phones that could record. No one even had cell phones, I don't think. Or if they did, they were brick, you know, size of a large brick. Probably weighed close to that amount too. But um, the batteries die in these most of the time, so you need to get replacement batteries. I did plug this one in and it did power on. I will show that in there. Listing just because that gives it a little extra value. I'm gonna miss in here. So it's an AC adapter. Just showing what I got. With the box I got. Camera. Charger manual. Blah blah. name on there. Let me get that off if I can. Probably where I bought it actually. That'll do. Right, I will leave these labels on. Typically I like to make these a little neater but now it is what it is should look at the book Put the handy cam sideways there so people can see what it is and this is a Sony CCD dash TRV 338 so I, I believe this one's going for about 80 to 80 bucks, 60 bucks, something like that. So um, let's lay this out a little better. And I just showing I have the box there. This will be the last one for this uh, this first person listing series here. Zoom out a bit. Just what you're getting with the lot. A shot of the camera on the side. I'll open it up. Let's see if I can get that plug in there and test it out. Back bottom of camera. That's where I plug it in. Thank you for whoever labeled that 20 years ago. And this will just, just to show it turns on. And the photo. Bottom back of camera right there. Thank you. And let's get the power here. Plug her in. the power on here hmm. 
Hmm. There we go. Just to show it's on and working. So I know I'm not going super fast through this. If I wasn't worried about filming, I can go a little quicker, but say you did this for an hour every night, you list, or you take photos for say 15 items in that hour. You spend another hour to list all those 15 items. So two hours a night, you can list 15 items. And that's pretty much, you know, what you could easily source in one day of a uh, garage sailing and estate sailing and thrifting. You know, you can make a good side income if you're if you're persistent. I think persistence over time is the key to success. So just be persistent, have fun with it, find cool stuff. Make sure you list it. Don't be like me and be disorganized like this. You know, try to organize it. I'm working on it, but uh my death piles are worse than a lot of people and it's <laughs> a little better than a lot of people, so from the very beginning, you want to figure out uh, an organization and rack system and inventory system that's going to work. Because as soon as you start scaling past 100 items, it becomes a little hard to keep track of everything and where it is. So whether you label each shelf A, B, C, D, E, F, G, or you label individual bins that way, um, just figure out a system that works and, and stick to it. There's plenty of videos out there showing you what other people are doing as far as inventory. So just take advantage of that. You know, there's tons of free resources out there. Take advantage of them. I should too. I wish I did from the beginning. It would have made uh, my organization system a lot easier. So I'm really kind of slacking on these pictures, but it's uh, close to 1 a.m. actually right now. So I'm just trying to list this really quick. Finish up. Hopefully the video wasn't too boring, but Operations guide. I'm gonna get the bottom of the camera here. And then one last shot of the whole thing. Again, this is very sloppy. If it was a more valuable item, I would lay out the photos a lot more neatly because that's the way you sell stuff. So let's see if I can fit this stuff in here. I believe the camera went underneath like this. It's initially packaged up. Something like that. Put in there. That will keep it from moving too much. Package. I can in here in a way that makes sense. <laughs> I'm packaging stuff much worse than I normally do. I don't know whether it's because I feel pressured on camera or what. I just want to get it done really quick, you know. So put manuals in. Boom. Charger. And then we're going to seal it all up in the box. Take one final picture. That'll be that. You guys cringing at how I packed that? Let me know in the comments. <laughs> yep. Okay, there we go. And I'll show it all packed up. In there. Just like that. Boom. So that's gonna be it guys for the video. Hope you enjoyed uh just seeing some of the stuff I have to sell and list. Um, and how I go through the photography process and um, Yeah, please criticize me for my hoard my sloppy death pile um, There is some good stuff in here, but uh, it doesn't do you any good if it's not organized and listed so take my advice get on that from the very beginning and uh, 
yeah, good luck selling stuff. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Take it easy, guys.